In my previous videos, I've explained quantum mechanics as the physics of time, as a physical process. In this video, I'm going to try and explain how this idea of thinking of quantum mechanics as the physics of time would fit in with our understanding of chemistry. In this theory, what we see and feel as time is formed by a process of continuous energy exchange formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, everything is radiating light photon energy continuously. We have a process of continuous creation with time as an emergent property with the future coming into existence photon by photon relative to the position and the energy and momentum or actions of the atoms within each individual reference frame. We see and fill this process from the centre of our own reference frame as the continuum of time and we are an interactive part of this process with the wave particle duality of light acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer forming a blank canvas that we can interact with turning the possible into the actual. If we think of chemistry as a bridge between quantum mechanics and the biology and the reality of everyday life, then if quantum mechanics does indeed represent the physics of time, then it should give us a deeper and more intuitive understanding of chemistry. Also, chemistry will be a good way to explain how the probability of the sub-microscopic world of quantum mechanics can represent the same uncertainty we have with any future event. This will be done using the physics and chemistry we already have, only the interpretation will change. The easiest way to see how this process works in our everyday life is to look how oxygen and hydrogen atoms bond together to form the characteristics of water. We have oxygen and hydrogen forming standing waves over a period of time in the form of water molecules. In this theory, the atoms do not just form standing waves over a period of time, but they form their own future relative to their energy and momentum. The water molecules will do this by continuously forming and breaking hydrogen bonds relative to the flow of the water. The molecules of water are continuously moving in relation to each other, and the hydrogen bonds are continuously breaking and reforming. This process forms dipole moments with the separation of charge, with the absorption and emission of photon energy. In this theory, this represents the future coming into existence within the reference frame of the water relative to the energy and momentum of the water molecules. Because time and space are interlinked, in this theory it makes sense that if you increase the temperature of the water, you will increase the photon energy, increasing the space between the atoms of the water as time unfolds, photon by photon. If the increase in temperature continues, the increase in space and time formed by photon energy will be too great and the atoms of the water will break away and we have a change of state from liquid to gas in the form of the creative nature of steam. This process also fits in with observations. If you decrease the temperature, there will be less photon energy for the breaking of hydrogen bonds that allow the movement of the atoms as a liquid. Therefore, if the decrease in temperature continues, there will be a change in state from liquid to a solid in the form of ice. Note the atoms still form their own future relative to their position in this case the decreasing temperature and this can be seen in the individuality and diversity of snowflake formation. There are no two patterns of snowflakes the same in the world. This diversity is formed by supple changes in photon energy that in this theory represents part of a process of continuous creation at the quantum level of the atoms. This diversity is possible because we have a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that even with only two types of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen 
can form an infinity of possibilities that we see as snowflake diversity. This process of symmetry forming and breaking can also be seen in the chemical reaction known as the BZ reaction, that is a spontaneous self-organizing activity forming patterns of concentric rings. The cores can be very tiny, just light or photon energy can create this process of spontaneous symmetry forming. If you break this symmetry by putting a hot wire into it, you will form rotating spirals. But to create broken symmetry, there has to be a process of symmetry forming to start with. This video will put forward the idea that this symmetry can be explained by quantum mechanics in the form of symmetry, not just in space, but also in the form of time symmetry. To understand this, we will start with the periodic table of elements and the main principles of this theory. The periodic table of elements is the cornerstone of modern chemistry, but in many ways it is based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. In a new theory, the paradoxes of quantum mechanics can be explained, giving us a deeper understanding of why we have a periodic table of elements. This theory is based on just two simple postulates. The first is that the quantum wave particle function, or probability function, represents the forward passage of time, itself, photon by photon. The second is that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, that is formed by the probability function, is the same uncertainty we have with any future event. This process of continuous change, or energy exchange, we see and feel as the flow of time itself, that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. This process is totally universal and interactive, from the largest object to the smallest creature, right down to the smallest element of the periodic table, will slow the rate that time flows, forming a curvature of space-time, relative to its own energy or mass. In this theory, the elements of the periodic table are standing waves over a period of time. Time is continuously being formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light waves of electromagnetic radiation. This forms a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that forms the spiral patterns we see in our everyday life, with each element of the periodic table having a set position forming the curvature of these spirals. With hydrogen at the centre and the noble gases and different groups of elements radiating out like spokes from the centre of a wheel. In the traditional periodic table there is a problem of where to place hydrogen and helium. They can be placed on the left hand side because of their electron configuration or they can be placed on the right hand side. But by placing hydrogen in the centre of a spiral we solve this problem. Also by having a periodic spiral we place the groups of elements that can undergo ionic bonding together on either side of the noble gases. We have had many different types of periodic table in the past. In 1865 the English chemist John Newlands formed a periodic table where the elements with similar physical and chemical properties reoccurred at interviews of eight which he likened to the octaves of Western and Indian music. This became known as the law of the octaves, but it only worked up to the elements calcium. Newly discovered elements further down the periodic table would not fit into the octave structure. This theory can explain a reason for this. It is because the spiral symmetry is formed out of the broken symmetry of a sphere, and as we go down the periodic table, the spiral symmetry becomes more broken and the elements become less stable. Only in three dimensions can we see the true beauty and wave-like nature of the periodic table. Each wave forms a period with elements that have similar properties, having a similar position within each wave. The different elements represent standing waves over a period of time. The atoms of the different elements can bond together in an infinite 
number of combinations and interactions forming our everyday world. This is not a static process, but a dynamic process with light waves of electromagnetic radiation continuously interacting with the atoms, with the future coming into existence with each new photon-electron coupling. Matter, in the form of electron waves of probability, is being created into particles when a light wave comes in contact with them, forming a photon-electron coupling. This represents the moment of now in that reference frame, with time symmetry between matter and antimatter, with the antimatter representing the past. In this theory, matter-antimatter annihilation forms part of a process of continuous creation, with the future coming into existence, photon by photon, within an infinite number of dynamic reference frames. This idea of the atoms of different elements bonding together by sharing electrons and then interacting with the wave-particle duality of light in unison, creating their own future, can give us an intuitive picture of modern chemistry. We have one universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking at the sub-microscopic world of quantum mechanics. The structure of modern chemistry are formed out of this process that the microscopic world of living organisms is then based upon. Cell life would then be based on this physical process between light or electromagnetic waves and the electrons of atoms. This physical process would look like intelligent design and give life a mathematical base that could be explained by physics. In this way, the probability of quantum mechanics, known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, can be seen as the same uncertainty we would have with any future event that we can interact with from the center of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. Therefore, carbon-based life is able to create its own future relative to its actions. In this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. Thanks for watching. Please rate and subscribe. It will help in the promotion of this theory.